Hey there guys, my name's Earth to Lydia and welcome back to another Should You Buy episode. For anybody that hasn't seen this series before, I usually give an in-depth analysis of a particular character that's featured in Dead by Daylight. We go over their perks, their character model, and what kind of playstyle they're more suited towards. The aim is to give you a full breakdown so you can make an educated decision on whether or not this DLC is for you. Now today we're going to be going over Yunjin Lee from the All Kill chapter, but if you want to catch any more of the characters that I've done, I will be leaving a link to the playlist in the description. Also, if you do like this series, if you'd subscribe for future updates. That is the best way that you can catch a new video when it comes out. Anyway, first we're going to be going over Yunjin's character model. Now everything from Yunjin's default cosmetics to all of her store cosmetics are very brightly coloured and don't make her the easiest to hide as. Even though she has a slightly smaller frame, her clothes tend to be very voluminous and stick out from quite a distance. You'll even have a hard time trying to find a headpiece that doesn't make her stand out as so far she only has the one hair cosmetic that is a slightly darker tone. However, if you do like flashing off a lot of brightly coloured cosmetics, Yunjin is a character for you. Even her cheapest cosmetics feature really bright colours, and for a very small price you can get a very nice and stylish outfit. When it comes to her voice and how easy it is to hide if you're injured, I actually find that when I'm playing Killer I can hear her breathing a lot more easier than other survivors. When injured, she also sounds very different to any other survivor. I don't know why, but a lot of her, I guess, voice lines, sound effects, when injured sound very exaggerated and almost anime style, so if you're hoping to blend in while playing her without Iron Will, you're probably going to have a difficult time for it. All in all, her character model definitely isn't for people that want to try and blend into maps. Now let's move on to Yunjin's teachable perks. So at level 30 in her blood web we unlock Fast Track. Now Fast Track is a token perk, whenever another survivor is hooked you will gain up to 3 tokens dependent on what tier your perk is, up to a maximum of 27 tokens at tier 3. Now you can save these up, but the next time that you hit a great skill check, Every token accounts for 1% bonus progress given to that generator. I have to clarify as well, this only works on repairing generators. This doesn't work on healing. Also, if you're not good at hitting great skill checks, this probably isn't the perk for you. This also has some good synergy with the perk Stakeout from Detective Tap, but if you're good at hitting great skill checks, you probably want to use this a little more strategically. Say, for example, you get the maximum of 27 tokens. That is 27% that can be immediately completed on a generator. For that reason, you probably want to harvest those and then say, for example, if you get into a 3-gen situation or you're against a killer that has really high mobility and can get between all the last gens fairly quickly, you might want to use that 27% to try and immediately finish off a generator. The next perk we have is Smash Hit at level 35. Now this is another exhaustion perk, which is fairly interesting right now. How this works is when you pallet stun the killer, you'll break into a sprint of 150% movement speed for 4 seconds. Now I'm not sure sure if this is intentional or not, but right now if you stun the killer and still get downed, then smash hit is delayed until you're back up again. So whether that's after an unhook or whether you get fully recovered by another teammate, you will stand up and you will use that haste status. It's not like lithe right now where if you vault a window and still get hit then the only thing that gets increased is your crawling rate. However, this does mean that this is the only exhaustion perk where your exhaustion actually isn't reset by being hooked. You'll get unhooked and then immediately break out into a sprint. Now I know this is probably going to sound enticing for people who want to pallet camp, however at mid to low ranks a lot of killers do respect pallets, so you might not see the most use out of it. Also at high ranks, if you're not the most competent looper, you'll notice that you probably don't get an awful lot of pallet stuns, so this is actually not the perk to be used when pallet camping. You might get some use out of it, but realistically it's not going to be that effective, compared to if you were just going to use it in conjunction with your normal looping style. And at level 40, we unlock the perk Self-Preservation. Now I've got to be honest, I think this is a better version of the perk off the record from Zarina. So when another survivor is hit with a basic or special attack within 12 meters of you, Self-Preservation activates. So you won't leave any scratch marks. When injured, your grunts of pain are reduced by 100% and bleeding is suppressed. All of these are for up to 10 seconds. So if you're somebody that likes going in for flashlight saves or even pallet saves, this perk is is going to be pretty good for you. Alternatively, you can use this to get away as well. Note that it won't actually suppress the sounds of you running, but everything else basically gets wiped off for the killer. This is only for 10 seconds though, so if the killer is waiting around a pallet or an open area and expecting a save like this, you might have some difficulty if you're injured. However, for a really quick save or getaway, this is a pretty decent perk. So what playstyle is Yunjin the most suited towards? Well, based off of her character model, I'd say people that want to 
actually try and hide in the game, she's not the character for you. Same with her teachable perks, whether you're gonna use them on her or someone else, they're for people who have a bit more experience and a bit more competence in the game. If you really, really struggle to hit skill checks, never mind great ones, then fast track isn't for you, particularly if you've not got stakeout unlocked, which could be a backup for people that aren't the best at hitting great skill checks. Smash it again is a pretty situational exhaustion perk, and realistically, I don't see many people running this over the other exhaustion perks that are in the game. And self-preservation again is gonna be for the people that are going for more advanced techniques, like flashlight or palette saves. But as always, if you just like a character model and want to practice with these perks, then who am I to tell you otherwise? Anyway, that is going to be all for this one video on Yun Jin. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Remember to let me know who you want to see next in the comments section. As I stated at the start of the video, I'm going to be putting a link to the brand new Should You Buy playlist. I thought it was about time it had its own playlist by now. And my social medias are linked in the description when you can find me on other platforms and ask me some more questions about this kind of thing. Anyway, thank you all for making it this far into the video. And as always, take care guys.